You are now tuning in to the Evolution Daily Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I say that, you know, to be inclusive. I think there's about three women in total. To you three women and all you gentlemen listening to this podcast right now, welcome back to the Evolution Daily Podcast. I am here. This is uh, this guest's second time being on the show. He is a fan of the show, uh, a self-proclaimed super fan of Evolution Daily. Uh, This dude is jacked. Uh, He's wearing glasses right now. And a tank top, so that way he can show his traps off while we record this video. (laughs) Bro, damn, yeah. Uh, Guys, this is Elon Muscular. Bro, welcome to the show. What is up, guys? It's great to be back. I really enjoyed the last podcast that I did with Aaron. Like he said, super big fan of the show. I listen to every episode. And uh, yeah, it's it's great to be on talking with you guys. I'm probably going to re-listen to this episode and... Like I re-listened to the last one that we did mm. as a fan and was like, wow, this is yeah. a good podcast. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just a fan. Dude, you want to talk, I mean, you want to talk about being a real sociopath. I listen to my own podcast often. <laughs> I mean, I will get done with an episode and I'll be like, damn, that shit was fire. And I never really do front to back, but I'll find myself listening to like a good 30 minute chunk of the episode. Um but that's what it takes. You have to have a certain level of neuroticism if you really want to make it in this game. So, bro, one of the things I told you before we began, and this is going to be a good place to start, is um, I think that you're one of the most knowledgeable people I've ever personally spoken to about fitness. And I, I genuinely mean that. Um, I've had other guys on this show that are, they're, they're great. They're fucking awesome. I know they're getting clients results. Um, I've talked to guys where they're in great shape. They understand shit, but you have put in how many years now into like, you will just break down the molecular code of why the fat is going to store more if you don't do whatever (laughs) directly after the workout. How many years have you been studying this shit? studying i'm just like a nerd you know what i mean like you can see me in my glasses like that's just how i am like you know i've been really deep into video games like getting to the highest levels like on some video games like writing down like timings and stuff like that now that i'm building my business i'm like you know studying everything i can like taking notes like creating systems and like that's just how i work right so Mm. it's the same thing with fitness like you know as a coach i realized that you know, if you want to get people the best possible results, knowledge is never something that is going to hurt you. You know what I mean? You should know as much as that you possibly can. And the more that I know, the less that my clients can get away with knowing because I can come to them and give them specific solutions. And I never lack an answer that that can emotionally and logically meet their need in like 20 seconds. And I, and I have that sure like i'm sure that it's the right thing because i know the science you know what i mean so it's just like Mm. having a strong scientific basis for things i feel like gives you a really confident approach when people are asking you questions because you're like there's no debate here like i'm not just an expert like this isn't me i didn't make this up like this isn't my method this is like biology you know what i mean do you have any do you have any good friends or family in your life that are very out of shape and you've tried to help them but they don't want to listen to you because you're close to them yeah a (laughs) hundred percent and um like so what i found is that you know i was like really deep into bodybuilding and i was prescribing anybody that would come to me for help I'd be like, no problem, man, I'll write you a diet. And the way that I dieted for a long time was just like extremely strict and science-based and math-based and everything is like calculated. Everything is like very regimented. And Mm -hmm. I realized now that after being a coach for a while, like I started my coaching practice like full-time in January. And at first I was doing that kind of thing with the clients. And I noticed that like people don't want 
exact solutions. They don't want to do everything you say all the time. They just need like a general framework to be able to live their life in and still be able to get results. So mm. I think nowadays I would be better at working with like somebody that didn't necessarily want to listen to everything that I had to say. But in the past, I was always like, listen, man, if you're not going to do it like this, 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 it's just not going to work. So don't talk to me. You know what I mean? And whenever mm. people try to come to me for free advice, like I've been done with that, you know, I've been in this game for 10 years and like people always want to talk about fitness. It's like something people always bring up to me as like a topic, like, Hey man, how do you get jacked? And I'm just like, dude, don't talk to me about that. Like, you know, what yeah. I mean? like, I'm I don't want to have this conversation again. Like. <laughs> this is what you do all day, every day. And you're, you're like, bro, we're at fucking dinner right now, man. Let me eat. I don't want to talk about my macros. Yeah. I've, uh, like, you're either yeah. going to do it or you're not, you know what I mean? So it's like, there's not really, there's not so much to talk about. Yeah. I've, uh, that's something for me, man. Like, you know, I've always kind of, uh, fluctuated in my weight. You know, I, I went from, I was about 290 at my peak um, super fat, super gross. I just went all the way down to 204, right? And I come from a fat family, a bunch of fat friends, fat environment. And when I lost all the weight, for me, it was so life changing. It was so profound, man. I woke up when I was really fat, feeling like an old man. I remember being 22, not knowing anything about hormones, like, like nothing scientific, but just waking up and thinking, dude, like I'm around all these college kids that are my age and they just are so vibrant and energetic. You know, I just people out on the fucking oval out here, just sprinting around and, and I'm like an, an old man. So when I finally lost the weight, I went into what a lot of people do, which is I went into missionary mode, right? I became a missionary of Look, this is what I did. Tim Ferriss, slow carb diet, mom, dad, brother, everyone around me, you all can do this too. And over the years, it has frustrated me because I couldn't understand why if I did it, that they couldn't do it also. I'm like, look, I'm just showing you. And, and this isn't me making it up. These are scientists. These are doctors. These are people. And uh, over, the, over the years, one of the quotes that has helped me the most in life uh, when it comes to friends and family is from a, uh, a book called the four agreements. You ever read that book? No, it's cool. He's got one line in there. Uh, it's Don Ruiz Miguel. He's got one line where he says the, the mind, the mind must be properly fertilized for the seeds of an idea to grow. So when I've tried to change my family's lives or my friends lives, they, they know me as like the dude that was getting blackout drunk, fucking falling over on the back porch. So they're not going to listen to me. <laughs> so it's, it's a, it's a sort of a, a frustrating thing, but I found that the more I actually let go of trying to help friends and family and just love them for who they are, then the more I'm happy and they're happy and we can just keep doing what we're doing. For, for fit, you know, changing your body is like a real transformation. You know, that's like really one of the realest transformations that you could possibly do. Like making more money is one thing, you know, getting a girlfriend or be, becoming better at dating is one thing, but changing your physical actual body, like from fat to fit is like a, a complete overhaul of your entire existence pretty much. And the identity needs to come first. Like you need to make a decision that you want to change who you are first before you can implement any of the scientific or, you know, whatever, like practical things that you need to do in order to get there. So the problem with, you know, you, you were already there mentally before you got there physically and mm. you're trying to get to explain to them, this is how you get there physically, but they're not even making the, they haven't even decided to make the change mentally yet. So like if yeah. someone isn't ready to make the transformation or this is the biggest thing that I get as a coach, like, you know, talking to people on consultations and stuff and people are like, you know, I actually know how to do it. They're like, I know how to do it. I just haven't done it yet. And I'm like, if you haven't done it, you don't know how to do it. You know mm, what I mean? So yep, it's just like, yep. Uh, yep. when it comes to fitness, like you have to be sure that you're going to do it. You have to know exactly what you're going to do and you need to be super motivated and do it every single day. 
and it's a boring process. It's a monotonous process, but like you said, the payoff is incredible. Like right now mm. I'm, I'm probably in some of the best shape of my life in terms of the way that I look, the way that I feel, my body fat is super low. The feeling of pulling up your shirt and being able to see a ripped six pack is just wow. You know what I mean? And the confidence that it gives you, because that's not me. Like I was always the skinny fat kid growing up. I was mm. not the athlete. So to be that guy now is like just really great shift of identity that makes me feel so much more confident. Yeah, I remember when I had first lost a lot of the weight, I would have this really crazy phenomenon happen where, I mean, it was shocking what would happen. There's one bar specifically um, in Columbus, Ohio, it's called BBR. And BBR, almost like a gym, has one wall of mirrors, like just the walls are mirrors, right? And, dude, I remember, like, we'd be at fucking Cantina and Brothers and killing it. I'm, like, making out with chicks. It's wild, whatever. We get to BBR. Dude, I remember for a long time I'd walk by the mirror and I would see myself and forget that that's what I look like now. <laughs> it takes a while to shed that fat kid identity. And I remember I'd catch a glimpse of myself and be like, what the f I'd almost be shocked. It was crazy. Uh, so there is so much of a mental shift that has to happen there as well. Um, I have two specific things I want to get into. So first off, before we get too deep into this episode and, you know, shooting the shit about whatever ends up coming up, how can people get a hold of you? Because because I am such a firm believer all the times that I've made the greatest strides in my fitness. So early on, I'd say it was the biggest stride ever. And that was from a breaking point. That was, I have no girls. I wake up feeling like an old man. Life is pure hell. I struggle more and more. Now I feel personally, and I got to get over this, but I struggle now more and more because life is good. So because life is good, I don't have that breaking point mindset I had back then. So now, anytime I do make the greatest strides, it is when I work with some sort of a coach, a trainer, uh, the boxing gym right now. I do, I can't, dude, I don't want to show up to the boxing gym fucking fat. I do Mondays and Fridays. I don't want to go in there on Friday after being in there on Monday and like I've fucking fattened up. I drank, whatever. I'm trying to like stay then lean and fit. Beat the shit out of you too. It's like a double whammy. Bro, I've been sparring and shit. It is life changing. It's life changing. I made a post about this in the mastermind. Um, dude, I, I mean, whatever. Like, this isn't good, I guess. But this guy who knows all about Evolution Daily, he came up and tried talking shit to me the other night at the bar. We were all out on Saturday night and this kid comes up and he's like, Hey man. So I heard that you basically go out sober and you try to like take home, uh, drunk girls, whatever. And I was like, I was like, Oh, oh cool. Interesting, man. Whatever. I was just like messing around at first, whatever. And then I started like debating him hardcore on game. And what the fuck does it matter if I've had five drinks, two drinks or zero drinks, it's completely irrelevant. We got into it. And it got, it got a little heated. He was with like a couple friends, but I found myself wanting to be tested <laughs> in the past, in the past, I would have actually felt way more adrenaline and way more like, Oh shit. But because I've been sparring so much lately and I've been, I've taken fucking hits, man. I bled all over the ring a couple weeks ago. I now I'm just like, Oh, let's actually, let's do this. Let's fight. I want to, I want to see what the fuck's up. Let, let's go. Um, but that's, that's not the point. The point is how can people reach you, uh, to get coaching? Cause I think it's one of the most profound things a man can do when he wants to level up in anything. Coaching, you know, it's like, yeah, you have to decide. Most of my clients come to me because they are in some sort of pain. Like that's really what spurs most people to hire a coach. And I would say that, you know, the type of person that comes to a coach saying, hey, I'm already doing well, but I want to take things to the next level. 
that's rare. Like I love to work with those people. Actually, my best transformations have been with those type of guys because they're hyper motivated and they're not going to fall off the wagon. And they're the ones that are going to do exactly what you say and they don't need handholding. They just need accountability. So mm -hmm. if you're listening to this and you're like that, I would love to work with you and we can get incredible results that you like won't believe. Like we'll have you six pack shredded in three months, two months. If you really do what I say, you know what I mean? Or if you're in pain and you're overweight and you just want to get in better shape and not feel like complete shit, like I definitely do that too. And that, you know, I do enjoy that work as well. Uh, you can reach out to me on Instagram at the Elon Muscular. I'm on YouTube, Elon Muscular. Uh, on Facebook, Elon Muscular. Yeah, just get in touch with me. I'm going to be dropping soon like a six day shred, like a fat loss, like uh, transformational, like whatever, just like a little thing. So you could get into me and understand like what I do, like some of my basic principles. So you can follow me and join that if you don't feel like paying thousands of dollars right away or whatever. But I can say that, yeah, fitness coaching, it definitely makes a huge shift. And for me personally, I, you know, was always in that in-between state and I didn't get super great results until I started to get professional information and professional accountability and started to have friends in the fitness industry and people watching over me being like, Hey man, you better get shredded. I know this is your goal. Like we're holding you to that. And we're expecting you to, to see that until I had that, I really didn't take, you know, I didn't re also got comfortable and never took it to the next level. Mm -hmm. So I think it definitely makes sense to have somebody in your corner. That's at least a few steps ahead of you to keep pushing you. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And it's one of the things I always tell people about coaching is I've even, and I'm not saying this would happen with you, but in my years, whether it was like business coaching, um, a business course, a fitness course, a fitness coach, like whatever, bro, I've had, uh, I've had situations where at the end of the day, truly did I get that much value from the course, the coaching, whatever, not really sometimes. Right. But just the investing, just that moment of, dude, I'm paying fucking one grand for three consultation calls with this business guy, like just that alone. And even if I left feeling like, oh, I kind of knew all that, I don't know if you really understood what I do and what I want to do, but just that fucking payment and seeing that 1K, 2K, I've paid up to 6K for fucking business coaching before. That going out of my bank account has been like, Oh, we're in this now. Let's go. So even if you are one of these people that you're like, logically, oh, well, it's all on YouTube. Log I could find any diet plan. What's he going to do? It's not that. It's the investment in yourself, which signals to yourself in the universe. I'm serious about this. I'm fucking done. I'm going to work with this person. I'm going to get results. And I think that that is one of the more powerful and not talked about aspects of hiring a coach. I am extremely cheap. Like I come from a, like my, I come from a poverty family. I was raised by a single mom in a one bedroom. I lived in the room. My mom lived in the living room. She scraped together every penny. Every time I asked for something that I was never there when I got into pickup and I first heard like them saying, oh, you never have to pay for shit for girls. If you pay for them, they were like, won't respect you or whatever. I was like, down. I never paid for anything. You know what I mean? Like I went on, yeah. remember I went on the second date with my, with my girlfriend. Now we've been together almost four years now, but on our second date, she bought like a $4 thing and I like didn't pay for it. Like I just oh. paid for my own thing because yeah. I was fucking broke. Like I live my life with no money. Like I had like $160 in my bank account at all times. So I know like what it is to be scared to spend money on something. And if I spent money on something and didn't feel like I got value out of it, if I just felt like, oh, I'm just investing in it to, you know, put my money into my own, whatever, like I would fucking hate that. And I would, I would lose sleep over that because I'm just, I come from that background. So with my programs, I uh, like, I, I started off charging way too low because I come from that mindset. And I found that I need a certain amount of money in order to be able to serve people the right way, because like I'm putting my time in, but everybody that works with me, I can say gets way more than they put in. And it's not just something that you could find for free online because 
you can piece things together from videos that you watch. You can do like a super restrictive keto diet and like lose weight or whatever. But if you really want to have a structured program that gets you straight from A to Z, make sure that you stay there, make sure that you maintain the results and like literally just drags you through the whole process that costs money. You know what I mean? And I would never want to sell something to somebody where I'm just like, Hey man, I'll, I'm jacked and I'll take a thousand bucks from you. Just so a jack, just so you're accountable to a jack guy and you want to impress me. So you want to get in shape. Like that's incongruent for me. You know what I mean? I try to give mm -hmm. as much value as I possibly can to people because that's what I would want, you know, just being from the background that I'm from. So I think I approach coaching from a little bit of a, of a different angle than some people. Like it's mm -hmm. really about giving value and, I really care about the results of my clients and I'm really passionate about being jacked and how much it can improve your life. Like on the last podcast that you had, like the, the guy was like, when you're jacked, it completely changes your results with women. Maybe you should even take a year off pickup and just focus on lifting weights. And although I don't necessarily agree with that, I think if you want to become good at something, you have to do that thing. So if you want to become good with women, you have to go talk to women. You don't have to become Jack because yeah, there's plenty of Jack guys that don't get any chicks. But once you put those two things together, it's like a mega accelerator. You know what I mean? And oh, yeah. I think if you're already investing in your dating, it also makes sense to invest in your fitness as well, because you're going to get compounding results off both of them. Yep, absolutely. And that's what when I first started, you know, I have a, a unique story. Uh, most people will tell me that they've watched pickup videos for six months, a year, two years, and they haven't gone out yet. They haven't gone out yet. I was out within 24 hours of watching pickup videos because I already was going out and raging, but I hit up my, my buddy who ended up becoming my roommate. And I said, dude, I found this shit. They talk all about how to go out and meet girls. Do you want to go out tomorrow night? He's like, yeah. So I just jumped right in and I was grossly fat. Like I was at that 290 while doing this. And to me, there was no waiting for things to get perfect. I then, after maybe about a month, two months in the game um, of actively going out talking to chicks, I had to get very real with myself and say, dude, you're not, this ain't going to happen. You hate how you look. I mean, my, I hated how I looked. So I then began that journey and everything was just this fucking upward spiral. And I think that there is this sort of, um, there is this kind of idea that you have to put all your eggs in one basket for this year. And then next year I'm focused on business, whatever. If you stop scrolling on fucking Instagram and OnlyFans for eight hours a day, <laughs> then guess what? You might be able to talk to some girls, go to the gym, and start a little side hustle if you stop fucking dicking around on Netflix for four hours a night. Um, bro, before we get too off topic here, first off, one thing. I'm going to have my assistant take one of your photos and make you a, uh, a quote photo. You said, I'm really passionate about being jacked. <laughs> That's 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 me. <laughs> Elon Muscular 2021. It's going to it's going to be you standing there. It's going to say I'm really passionate about being jacked. And and second off, I wanted to actually ask you about one of your recent posts because this is something that you posted and that I get obsessed with um when it comes to my own fitness, fitness coaches in general. And you didn't use a specific term that they use often, um, but you had a whole post the other day where you broke down how the extremely restrictive diets, people that think, all right, I'm going to get shredded by summer, and they cut down to a thousand calories of keto for three months, or you know, they're just they're they're crazy strict. You had this whole post about how right now you're kind of you're just eating more. You talked about the training that you're doing. Um, and I see this called a lot of the time in the industry. I don't know if this is what you would refer to it as, as um, reverse dieting. So you said, so you said here, I'm, I'm going to actually quote it. You said six pack uh, summer checklist. And then you do four things not to do. 
eating only meat and veggies, long, boring hours of cardio, training six times a week, keto diet. Those are what a lot of people are jumping to. Then you have four things that you say to do. Eating whatever you want, getting tipsy and walking around the city, training three to four times a week, dining out at nice restaurants. Now, explain why eating maybe more food or just not being super strict with diet can help you lose fat because that's the first one people jump to. So could you talk to me and the audience a little bit about that? Sure. And um, yeah, the term that I would use is definitely not reverse dieting. What reverse dieting means is uh, once you go on a diet and you lose a bunch of weight, reverse dieting is how you reverse out of the diet to not gain the weight back that you lost. So Mm. that's like a way to like, cause, cause like I said, a lot of people, when they do a diet, it is inherently a crash diet It's inherently a very restrictive diet. That is what diet means to most people. Like why I said those four things, because when most people think I'm going to get in shape for summer, that's literally what they immediately think. If you go online and try to get information on how to get, you know, ripped for summer, that's pretty much a lot of the things that you're going to find are going to tell you to do those things. And that's just what people do. Like, that's just the thing, you know what I mean? And I'm not reverse dieting. I'm not eating a lot of food. I'm eating a little bit of food. I'm getting ripped. If you go on my page and look six packs everywhere, but I do it by, I don't work out six times a week because you don't have to, if you put your max effort into your workouts, you really only need three or four workouts a week. And Mm -hmm. how you program them is important, which I say, you know, that's why it's good to have a coach that can get you on a straight path because the workouts need to be programmed correctly. I'm not saying just do your, you know, bitch made workouts three, four times a week, it's not going to work. But if you go hard and you know exactly what you're doing, you're tracking the variables and you, you know, are really putting in serious effort, you, I couldn't do those workouts six times a week. Like I would be swamped. I would be brain dead and unable to move with the workouts that I'm doing. So I think it's better to have more intensity, less times working out than spinning your wheels. People just, you know, they don't know what to do. They don't know how the science works. They don't know how to do it. So they think they have to restrict themselves and spend time. They want to spend time. They want to spend effort, but what really that's not what it is. The effort needs to be concentrated. And when I say, you know, get tipsy and walk around the city, that's just like a way of putting it like, hey, I had a drink, you know, I had a, a big white claw that has 170 calories in it, right? That's not a lot, but we hung out around the city all day. I probably burnt 400 calories just walking around. So I drank a white claw and walked around with my girlfriend, you know what I mean? And I lost fat doing that, right? Mm. And what most people think is they can't drink alcohol, but in reality, drink alcohol, but be active. That's what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Because most people are just going to sit in their house and not be active. I'm saying go outside, drink a White Claw, go on a date, go for a walk around the park. You know what I mean? Burn some calories and stay active. And then when it comes to eating out at nice restaurants, like, yeah, we ate out at a nice restaurant. I probably had 1500 calories in that meal. But all I ate that day was like I had some oatmeal in the morning Then I drank a White Claw. Then we went out to a nice restaurant. For me, that's a day of fat loss. I woke up the next day and I lost weight. You know what I mean? So it doesn't have to be like this crazy restrictive thing. It can be chill as long as you understand the lifestyle and you're not like overeating, you're being reasonable, you're staying active. Like that's what being fit is. You know what I mean? Like being fit doesn't mean suffering and hating your life. It means enjoying your life. Like fitness, if you look at the definition of fitness, like evolutionary fitness, right? It's like, you're more attractive, you're more active, you have more energy, like you, you, you get more out of life. So it's just the opposite approach. Like you're not, it's not restrictive. It's, you know, abundant that's how it should Mm. be and that's how i try to make it for myself and my clients and we all get great results and also don't hate our lives so yeah um, that's that that's important and i am somebody who maybe it stems from that first time that i lost all the weight i was on a crash diet i i think you know i needed to do something very extreme at that time i did it it worked for me but I think that what that created for me, because I did that over a period of, I went from uh, I went from uh, 290 down to about 204. 
in a period of about four months, right? Four or five months. So I, I did a crash diet. It worked for me at that time. But I think that what that's almost created in my mind over the years, which I've actually been very good about getting out of, is that, okay, we're either starving now or we're binging. It's like we either are eating whatever we want and fuck it because I already had too many carbs this morning. So uh, why, why say no to the street vendor? Why say no to going on this date and eating whatever I want? Um, so it is that it is the middle ground there. It's, it's the middle ground. And I want to share something that's really, that really helped me out a lot. Um, when it comes to having a healthier mindset around food, it was just like one little sort of like mind shift. And what it was, was recognizing rather than daily calories, because that's what everybody focuses on, right? Yeah. I'm doing 2000 calories a day. I'm doing 25 a day, whatever. Focus more on your weekly calories because when you focus on your weekly caloric intake and then your output over the week, well, now, ah, fuck, man. Like, yeah, we broke last night. We had that pizza. So now your calories for that day are shot. But now let's just make that up over the next couple of days. Let's drop down a couple hundred cals a day. And that kind of just that shift of the weekly versus the daily, um, has helped me, I think, to not fall off the wagon as often with bad eating, whereas before there would be a lot of shame. I do three days totally perfect of keto or 2,000 cows or whatever, and then all of a sudden, yeah, I've had a beer. Oh, the nachos. She wants the nachos. Let's get the nachos. Now we're drinking more, and I'm pissed at myself. But if I'm on this weekly mindset, it really helps me to now just – make up for it and not stay off the horse. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that that's definitely sounds like it was a healthy way to look at it for you. You know, everybody has their own relationship with fitness. Everyone has their own way to look at it, you know, but I think ultimately like expanding from the day to the week is great. You're looking at things bigger picture, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But imagine taking it from the week to the life, you know what I mean? Like, this is my life. I'm always going to have a six pack. So how do I need to live to always be in good shape? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that, uh, but I, I'm still living my life. I'm still a person. I still like to have nachos. I still like to have popcorn or whatever, but like, what can I do lifestyle wise to make these things better options for me? How do I make nachos, but have them maybe not have as many calories? Or how do I make sure that I can factor a Friday night of drinking and dating and boozing and fun and blah, 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 and not and no stress or worry into my, you know, whole diet into my lifestyle, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I could do every single week and I never feel bad about it because come Monday morning, I look in the mirror and I didn't do any damage, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. just, it's about the lifestyle, unless you're like some kind of body, because a lot of this restrictive, you know, um, disordered sort of thinking comes from the fitness industry, the bodybuilding industry, people who compete, people who model and stuff like that. And, um, you know, we're not trying to do that. Like most people don't even need to have a ripped six pack. They just want to not be fat and not feel like shit. And mm -hmm. you can eat not, you know, nachos and drink beer and not be fat and not feel like shit. You know what I mean? Like that's totally reasonable. Yeah. And something that uh, I think would, provide a lot of value to the audience is something that I uh, discovered one day and it, it blew my mind. So when we excrete cortisol, right from stress, that's one of the things that people talk about, about why you're getting fat, why it's like from a lot of stress that that really will happen. And um, I, I read or heard something one time that blew my mind. And it said that the worst thing you can ever do in your life is develop this uh, shame around eating the big meal, eating the bad meal, because what you're doing is you're literally not only just eating the pizza with friends and enjoying yourself, you're sitting there. Oh, I shouldn't eat it. Oh, dude, what are you doing, man? Come on, dude. We did keto for three days. What you're all these thoughts are running in your head and you are literally releasing the hormone in your body that signals to go into starvation and hold on to calories and food. It's the worst thing you can do. So I think that 
going into this sort of, this is my lifestyle. Sure, here and there, food, pizza. But dude, let's do four days this week of like hitting it hard. Let's go. Getting into this mindset of it's okay to eat whatever I want um, within moderation and by making up for it. I think that just even on a really deep hormonal and psychological level, that's going to fix a lot of people's problems. Yeah. And I find that, you know, the more that I coach people, it's like a lot of mindset coaching, you know, a lot of like, you know, building a better relationship with food, building a better relationship with fitness. And like, I try to be the example of somebody who lives a balanced lifestyle and still looks great. You know what I mean? And that is what I'm trying to like portray in my content and the way that I present myself. Like I want I don't want to be seen as like a flexing bodybuilder who's like, you know, giving up everything just to be jacked. I want to be seen as like, you know, I'm a cool guy. I have, you know, maybe decent style. I go out with my girlfriend. We have a good time. We, we enjoy life and I have a great body and anybody can do this. You know what I mean? And that's just the truth. I really do believe that that is the truth. And I do think that, you know, this whole thing is wrapped up in shame insecurity, people feel bad about themselves. And like, I see a lot of fitness coaches propagating this too, like making people feel bad about themselves. And like, you know, like I see people like Greg Doucette online, like, you know, taking like videos of like fat, like girls or stuff like that, that are trying to be body positive and being like, oh, why are you being body positive? You're fat, it's killing you and all this stuff. Like, you know, <laughs> that's not gonna help people get in better shape. Like telling people that they're fat and they're killing themselves is not gonna motivate them to be better. Like we should be more positive, you know what I mean? I think even if you're fat and you're out of shape and you feel like shit, you should feel good about yourself and try to feel as good about yourself as you can. And changing real positive change that comes from deep inside that expresses itself in your life is only going to happen when you're cool with who you are. If you hate yourself, you might change temporarily, but you'll always be on this up and down. You know what I mean? It's only when I really like learn to be happy with like who I am and what I'm doing that my fitness like really took a turn for the better. And I just mm -hmm. was more chill. And I feel like I never release cortisol anymore when it comes to food. Cause I just remember like, I'm Elon muscular, like, you know, this shit's not going to kill me. Like I'll always be ripped. You know what I mean? Like no matter what I did wow, yesterday, yeah. no matter what I do tomorrow, like that's who I am. That's what I do. So it's just like, I'm not like worried about it anymore. I love that, man. I'm writing that down. This is who I am. No matter what I can do what I want. I'll always be ripped because the <laughs> subconscious mind, I can do what I want. I'll always be ripped. Uh, the subconscious mind is so powerful, man. I mean, think about that. You're eating pizza with the girlfriend. You're having beer. Think about that mindset. I'm Elon Musk. I'll always be fucking ripped. I'm passionate about being jacked. Let's dig into this pizza, right? Versus, oh, dude, what are you doing, man? You're supposed to be getting jacked by June. Don't touch the pizza. Ah, oh, fuck. You're like uh, on a I'm roller. I'm supposed to be an influencer. What are my clients going to think? You're oh. panicking eating the pizza, and now it's just going <laughs> straight to that six-pack. It's going straight to the belly. It's primal. Yeah, bro. Crazy. Um, another thing, and man, like I fucking, this was a big one for me and late. I, I have a good excuse. I've been moving late. I, I've, I've had a lot going on the last, the last couple of weeks, but I've definitely not been going to the gym the way I should be. I am going to the boxing gym, which that's great. That's an intense cardio. Right. Um, and I do actually think my shoulders are even getting bigger cause you gotta fucking, you gotta be up the whole time but I'm not hitting the weights the way I should. Uh, but that's just, like I said, moving. I'm about to be driving to Texas for the next three days, whatever. But uh, Logan Paul also said something on a podcast a while back, and he said he heard it from somebody and that it changed his life. And when I heard it, I was like, whoa, that's a big deal. And I think that you could relate to this. So he said that, he's always looked at fitness as something that he's doing for training for something. Summer's coming. I want to get a six pack. I've got this wrestling meet coming up. I've got to be in tip top shape, whatever. I want to get more girls. I got to get in tip top shape. You're always doing it for something. Then that thing comes around and now maybe you've gotten the goal or that timeline is over or whatever it is. 
He said, then you lose all that fire and motivation afterwards. And he said that once he succumbed to the idea that it does not matter whether there's a boxing match, uh, you know, whatever it is, he is just now a dude that works out and that's who he is till he dies. I'm not ever training for anything. I just work out forever. That's who I am versus something I do for a goal. And when I heard that, that really helped me as well because of, again, falling off the diet for three, four days. Oh, I'm already looking a little fat or I'm getting discouraged. No, dude, you're someone that works out several times a week, no matter what. And I think that if my audience and anyone that hears this could sort of get that mindset underway as well. It's not just to lose 50 pounds. It's not just to get girls, it's not just for this. It's that I want to live a fit, active, fun lifestyle and feel good. So now I'm just going to work out forever. Yeah, it's tough because, you know, in order to market something to someone, you have to do it goal based. You know what I mean? So that's how we did. That's how we discover these habits to begin with. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, you're marketing a course. It's like get a girlfriend in this many days. You know what I mean? Like get laid on this boot camp. Like you want the result then and there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like I'm coming out with this fat loss uh, challenge, six day shred. You're not going to get shredded in six days. You know what I mean? But you might learn a habit that you can take with you after the six days, but I have to say, you know what I mean? Like there you're not going to run a timeline. You're, you're not going to run ads that are like, do you want to work out forever? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm your coach. <laughs> Get Pay ready to work out till you die forever and always work out. And yeah, yeah. like you'll be totally happy. Like, you're ready to hit the gym from now till you're 70. Let's go. No one's like, Oh stop, yeah. It'll like, all go away. Like, yeah. You know, that's yeah, not, that's like, true. Sexy, you know, kind of mindset. Well, but. Dude, what's funny, what's funny about that is uh, my business coach actually taught me this concept and he does it and he wants me to do more of it, which is called magic pilling people. So what it is, is let's say that you're running an ad, right? And you're like, do you want to lose, you know, people think this is crazy, but do you want to lose 15 pounds in the next five days? Guaranteed, blah, blah, blah. They sign up for your whatever, your email list, your free giveaway. And once they've signed up for the magic pill, then you hit them with reality. And you go, listen to me, motherfucker. I'm not these other scam artists are going to tell you you're going to lose 15 pounds of fat in five days. Here's the reality of how we can do that in the next da, da, da. However, whatever that time frame would be. Um, because, yeah, that's just human nature 101. People want the magic pill. No one wants the you want my program to grind hard and get up to, you know, a hundred K a year in the next six years. Everyone wants the million dollar fucking <laughs> client sales program in seven days. Uh, so yeah, there, there is something to that magic pill, bro. Do you see a lot in the fitness industry that you view as just like these, how do these people sleep at night? This is horrible. What they say, it's horrible. What they do, like, are there, you don't have to name anybody, but is there shit you see in this industry that you just know is total fucking bullshit and they're making money and it pisses you off? Not that they're making money and you're not, but rather that they're, that they're selling people on some like bullshit ass thing that's only going to further hurt them. I, you know, I don't have anything against anybody making money. And if it, and if people are making money in the fitness industry, that's awesome because the industry is growing and it trickles down to everybody. You know what I mean? Um, what I don't necessarily love is like, you know, I made a lot of videos like earlier on about like these SARMs and like this different stuff like that. And I do think that there is a place for, you know, taking steroids or research chemicals or whatever the fuck you want to take in order to improve your physique if you're so serious about it and you need to go to that next level. But I see a lot of teenagers and I see a lot of guys looking for a shortcut that want to take, you know, drugs, basically, like these SARMs that have been marketed heavily in order to better get in better shape. So it's like, I think that I want to get ripped for summer. So I'm going to take these like research chemicals that this guy said have these like effects and they do have these effects. Right. But it's like, I just, I don't really believe that 
like I, I just, the fitness industry in terms of like coaches and information, it's all good. Everybody has pretty much the right perspective. All the fitness coaches that you've had on the show, like Mo Gias, that, that guy, um, the guy who trained Gary V, like I like mm. those guys. And I think that they totally have the right idea. I actually find that a lot of the mainstream content that's uh, like towards just a normal, like gen pop audience is actually a lot more healthy then a lot of like the hardcore extreme content where it's like, I don't know. I just, I don't really like people selling like things to people saying that they only have positive results or that they have positive results when they don't. Like, I just think that the supplement industry in general, like I worked at GNC and I found the model to be quite predatory. Like I just, I don't believe in selling people pills. This, this, it boils down to this. I don't believe in selling people pills to fitness solutions. Pills is like the last thing that helps you with your fitness. Like really it's the last thing. Like if somebody comes to me and asks me what supplements should I be taking to get in better shape or what supplements do you take? The first thing I tell them is like, dude, you got it all backwards. If you're asking me about supplements, like that's not the right question to be having because mm. supplements won't work unless your entire program is optimized and it, they probably won't even really work that much anyways, but they're disproportionately, like people think that they make a disproportionate difference and they also cost a lot of money. So it's like, you're paying like $60 for this supplement when you should have just bought like fucking shrimp because you hate chicken and you can't eat another chicken breast you should have invested in some nice shrimp so you could have a good lean protein source and not eat pizza but instead you mm. bought a fat burner and ate pizza instead of buying shrimp you know what i mean i just think that people should invest more in their nutrition coaches you know knowledge accountability before they buy you know drugs supplements and like quick fixes that's like really my thing yeah yeah no i um i find that as well when it comes to my coaching when i'm coaching guys with pickup and everything is um i felt this i felt this desire for a long time to always be very on the cutting edge with like a video concept or something like this day game hack that's going to skyrocket results. And it would be like this little like conversational tonality sort of thing that I really implore guys to use, whatever. And it's very valuable. It's very valuable to someone that is out here taking a lot of action, really going for it. The problem is that that is like a small amount of the people that are actually even watching my shit. And so now with my coaching, with everything, until a guy is getting to a place where he is seeing some results, he's having something happen, the wheels are turning, I don't want to bog him down with all of the little micro nuances of, of the interaction that are going to make it so that da, da, da. it's everything comes back to the foundations. And I think that the foundations are not sexy to people. The foundations of calories in, calories out. These are the best compound movements for lifting. What's sexy is this new GNC pill with Jillian Michaels on the front and how she fucking shred her. It's like, yeah. Again, now we're talking about a literal magic pill that people get attracted to. And at the end of the day, the same people that chase magic pills in fitness are going to chase magic pills in game. They're going to chase magic pills in, in uh, business, right? This fucking click funnels web, perfect, the perfect webinar. And I'm going to do this and make a million dollars. And the more you chase magic pills throughout your whole life, the less likely you are to ever understand the foundations that are key to building whatever empire it is that you're trying to build, whether that's your body, your business, your dating life. I think as professionals, you know, it's our responsibility to try to find ways to make the foundation sexy and bring people into, you know, learning foundational principles by, you know, in case of me in the fitness industry, being sexy ourselves. Like, I think that it's, you know, it's my responsibility to be in good shape so that people will listen to me and be like, okay, he's telling me I got to do foundational shit. Maybe, you know, that this other guy is, tell, is trying to sell me a magic pill. They look roughly the same. So let me try the magic pill first. And then they try the magic pill first and then it doesn't work. And they're like, okay, maybe this Elon muscular guy had a point. And then they come back around and actually have to learn the foundational thing, or they just fall off and never get the results and never actually achieve their goal, which is also fine. 
but I just think that as an ethical, you know, business owner in an industry, you should, your in the same way, your business has to be based on the foundations of what you're looking to teach because otherwise it will fail eventually because then mm. you are not in the truth. You know what I mean? And you yeah. will be exposed. Like the six pack shortcuts guy, like he got banned off of YouTube because he was straight up scamming people with his shortcuts and they just couldn't allow it to exist anymore. You know what I mean? So, Whoa. Are you talking about the Asian guy? Yeah. Like six pack shortcuts, like the biggest channel, but they were straight up like scamming people and what they were saying didn't work. So the channel got taken down with like 4 million subscribers. Dude, you know, what's so wild. Isn't it crazy the way that because there's so much noise in the world that like some of the noise disappears and you don't even notice. Like when you just said that six pack shortcuts, I was like, that blew my mind because I remember back when I was looking up fitness stuff all the time, those videos would be like top two, three ranked, right? It'd be like Athlean X fucking six pack shortcuts. And I just didn't even notice that they're gone because there are so many other people out there. Uh, that's very interesting though. I remember watching a lot of those videos back in the day. So they were just blatantly lying essentially about like, and then what, trying to funnel you into a certain program and these sorts of things. I don't know exactly what it was. I just know that they were taken down. YouTube decided that they were a scam and removed them. You know what I mean? But, you know, there's a lot of controversy now around this dude, V Shred, who people are saying is also a scam. Uh, but he spends a ton of money on YouTube ads, so they probably won't re remove him. I don't know. Sometimes a lot of the biggest people are actually the scammiest. But I don't know. I honestly, I'm not so into the drama. I'm not really into the drama side at all. Like I just really Good. try to like, you know, serve clients and like help people and stuff like that. I, I will, I'm on YouTube and my YouTube channel is, you know, growing and I do want to keep expanding on YouTube, but YouTube is so much drama now. And I just see so many people arguing all the time and like arguing about the science and arguing about this and that. I'm like, guys, it's not that fucking complicated. It's not like a dramatic thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like fitness yeah. is just like, it's not like, I don't understand where drama comes into the equation. It's not even a dramatic thing. Like I could see how pickup could, you know, have drama. There's other people involved. There's women uh, coming out with allegations and all this different stuff, but fitness, it's like, come on, dude, like there's go to the gym and eat right. <laughs> what the fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Like what's the, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, one of the things, I mean, this is pointless. This is, I, I'm not even going to go into it, but it's, it's just one thing that I thought was very funny. I thought this was very funny. Um, and I like this guy. I think this guy's fucking awesome. Um, but the, uh, Kino body guy, Grego Gallagher, right? Something that I thought was so fucking funny is that this dude went into quarantine, right? Like when, when COVID hit, jacked as fuck absolutely jacked right and then during it like two months in three months in first of all he's got a full ass gym in his basement huge gym squat racks like crate you know huge mega gym then he puts out this whole program about how you can get this physique by doing body weight exercises and look at these body weight movements and buy my body weight program and i'm like you fuckers think I'm like, you fuckers really think that this dude like is not using his epic gym at his crib and that he wasn't jacked as fuck going into this program. That was one that I saw and I just even had the thought, I was like, anyone buying into this idea that this dude looks like this from body weight movements is like a men, almost like a mentally ill person. Uh, it was, it was shocking for me to see that level of marketing and it, he probably did very well. And maybe those programs did help some people that did not have access to the gym. It's very possible. I don't have a problem with that because I think that like, as a fitness professional, our body is going to be like the billboard for our marketing, but we are not like a hundred, like, I don't have to disclose everything that fucking went into building my body every single time I come out with a program or try to give someone advice. It's like, if I'm trying, you know, he does do body weight exercises. He can do like really impressive body weight stuff. His body wasn't totally built on it, but it's been a fucking 15 year project. You know what I mean? Like the program, if it can help people, then it can help people. It's like, 
as a fitness professional, every time I make a post, like I just made that post, like about drinking white claws and eating at nice restaurants, but you know what I mean? Like I didn't say, mm. Oh, also like, this is what I did recently to get in shape, but also I did these steroids and I did restrictive diets and I've been working out for 12 years. If you just drink a white claw and go eat at a restaurant, you're not going to look like me tomorrow. You know what I mean? But I'm yeah. just trying to market, you know what I mean? And he's trying to market and we're trying to say, you know, you could do this to get into better shape. Doesn't necessarily mean that's like what I've been doing the whole time, but it's like, I can't, like he can't go back and rebuild his body just on body weight. And then just to market this program, you know what I mean? And you got to always come out with new offerings and new stuff. And I think as long as you, you know, I love Greg and I think that everything he does is fantastic. I've personally used his programs to get in good shape in the past anything that you know can help people get into better shape as a fitness professional and is based in good stuff like i'm all for it i i just i don't like this whole thing of everyone being like oh but this guy's like a fake natty you know these guys do steroids you'll never look mm. like them like without doing steroids like okay yeah you might never look like the guys on instagram without taking a boatload of fucking steroids more than you could even imagine like to look like some of these guys, you know what I mean? That you think you could achieve naturally if you're listening to this. But at the end of the day, like you're fucking skinny fat and you look like shit. You know what I mean? Like if you do mm. their program, you will be better. You're not going to be them. They never said you'll be them. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. I just, I think that it's like, it's stupid to be like, I'm going to become this guy by doing his program. Like that's not how things work. Right. Mm. Yeah. No, that's interesting. That makes sense. And overall it is, it's, it's the noise that takes you away from just doing what's going to work. And, um, you've listened to the Mo, uh, Gaius episodes on here. And something that he always talks about is he always recommends just working with one coach and just doing what they tell you to do. Otherwise you get that shiny object syndrome. So you're on the Kino body fucking program and you're like, you're doing it. You're getting a couple weeks in, whatever. And then you see Kino body exposed for using gym and taking MK677. And it's like, wait, wait, no. And it's like, I have the keto diet. You should be. Uh. So yeah, drowning out that noise, putting your head down to the grindstone, moving forward down one path, you're going to get further. It's like, you know, uh, they say, you know, as the crow flies, right? It's that's how far a distance is versus taking all the roads. So if you can just go down that one path, then you're going to get there. You're going to get wherever you're going faster. Um, awesome, man. Good stuff. Well, hey, bro, we're going to wrap this up here. Um, you're really passionate about being jacked. You want to help people who maybe went into this summer a little chub. The summer hasn't really begun yet. June 21st, which is my birthday, is actually the first day of summer officially. Um, what... What can we, what can I do to be jacked by June 21st, bro? It's currently so I, May you know, 24th. I've been saying this for months. Like I started my diet in March. Everybody wants to get ripped for summer, but what they don't realize is it doesn't take a day. You know what I mean? Like, oh, and I've made this mistake so many times. Like I've literally made this exact mistake uh, it's like June time, it's getting warmer and I take my shirt off and go down to the beach and I'm like, fuck, like I got to get in shape. And then I mm. start getting in shape and by September, I look incredible and then it's over. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like I hit yeah. the peak right when it's like ending and it's like, I didn't even get to enjoy the time. I live right by the beach. So there's like an extra motivation for me to get in good shape because I go walk on the beach all the time and get you know, positive validation from people, people walk up to me and be like, dude, you're so jacked, blah, 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 all the time. And, and, and it's like, it's great for me because it motivates me to stay fit and to get fit mm. for the summer. So I think it's really good if you live in an area where, you know, you're by a beach or you're by an area that can really help motivate you. If you want to get jacked for summer, I think the number one thing that you should start to do is just figure out ways to eat less food, you know what I mean? And figure out ways to be more active. And I always recommend that people track their food. Like if you, what can't be measured, can't be managed, right? Tim Ferriss said that, right? Mm -hmm. I yep. always think 
to every one of my clients. It's like, if you're not tracking your food, it's like, you want to think about it like you have a budget, you know what I mean? You can't go over your budget every month and you have a budget of calories that you have every single day. If you don't know, or week, if you want to put it that way, if you don't know what your budget is, you will never be able to achieve results. And it can be very linear. One pound of fat is 3,500 calories. So if you eat 500 less than you're supposed to eat every single day, you'll lose a pound a week. Do the math. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, how many pounds do I really have to lose before I you know, feel good about myself? And then that's how many weeks it's going to take. So if you have 20 pounds to lose, it's going to take 20 weeks. I'm sorry, you already missed this summer, buddy. But like, if you start now, <laughs> I re I reject this. I reject this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, go well, ahead. Well, you can, you know, I think if you really want to do it aggressive, you can go up to a thousand under, you know what I mean? Or 500 and do extra cardio and track your cardio. You can lose fat at two pounds a week and you can keep it off. I have had clients that lost over 20 pounds in three, in three months, which is 12 weeks. 25 mm. pounds, you know, it, and the more fat that you have to lose, the easier it is to lose it. So if you're going to mm. go from 250 to, to 220 in three months, that's way easier than going from 220 to 190, which is going to be way easier than going from 190 to 160. Another thing is most people think that the weight that they have to be to be ripped and have a six pack is way higher than what they actually do need to be. Like the mm. average guy, like who's like, I'm 5'11", like, if I wasn't super muscular, like if I was just a normal guy, I would probably need to weigh like 170 pounds, you know, to really have like a six pack. So, or 160 pounds if I like really wasn't muscular, if I was just like skinny, a muscle guy kind of thing. So I think that, you know, a lot of guys think that they have less, they, they think they have more time than they do. So now if you're listening to this and you want to be in good shape for summer, you have to literally start today and you have to be aggressive to a certain point, but don't crash diet, work with somebody so you can aggressively get the fat off and really look good by July. I know this sounds kind of boring and probably everybody's like tuning out by now, but there is a way to catch this summer. And if anything, you don't need to have a six pack. You don't need to be super lean, but just being in a diet will make you more sharp. It'll make you more confident. It'll make you more focused towards your goals. So just simply knowing that you're at a diet will improve your business. It'll improve your pickup. Everyone gets way more done when they're on a diet because you're hungry and hungry dogs hunt best. And it's good to always stay a little bit hungry, especially when it's hot. You know, you, you're just, you're focused in when you go do your game, mm -hmm the girl will be able to tell that you didn't just eat a bunch of donuts and that you, you have that sharp energy about you. You yep. know what I mean? So I would recommend that, you know, if anybody wants to get in good shape and you're confused about it, reach out to me and uh, we'll at least get you on the, the fat loss thing that's coming out soon for free. And you can at least get the habits that you need in place to start on the journey of getting in great shape for summer. Awesome, man. We'll wrap up there. Good stuff. And on Instagram, that is the Elon Muscular, correct? Yep. Awesome. Very, uh, very marketable name. Love, love that name. All right, guys, hit up Elon if you want to get shredded soon. If you want to get a six pack in the next four days, which is what he guarantees you, uh, you can. <laughs> nah, hit him up though, guys, and uh, make sure that you guys. This is the first episode of the podcast that is going out while the Evolution Daily Mastermind is now open. So head over to evolutiondailymastermind.com. Join us in there. We do weekly calls. We get all my infield programs, access to the Evolution Daily Mastermind Summits for free. So head over to evolutiondailymastermind.com. Get jacked. Hit up Elon Muscular on Instagram. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for being on here, bro. Thanks, bro. Peace.